Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sevy. Today we're gonna to be making one of my favorite quilt patterns, rainbow layer cake. And we do use a 10 inch square pack and a strip roll for this, but it's not named for the copyrighted layer cake term. It's named because it literally looks like a rainbow layer cake that you would bake. And I love baking and I actually made these with my daughter and they're so much fun. And we're gonna quiltify it today. So first things first, you wanna make sure you are choosing a fabric line that has a lot of color in it, or at least has a lot of variation in terms of value from one end to the other. Um, I saw Valerie Wells Murmur, and I thought this is gonna be the perfect one to remake this quilt in. I originally made the quilt a long time ago when it, we first released the pattern, but we weren't doing a lot of video tutorials at the time. So the second I saw this, I'm like, that's it? That's the line. So we will have kits available for this while supplies last, and you can get those over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. But when you're evaluating, if you, if you miss out on the kit or you wanna use something, you wanna get one 10 inch charm pack and one strip roll from the same fabric line, and you wanna have a good, nice color variation through it. Rainbow works great, obviously, but anything that travels nicely in value will work for it. So in order for this pattern to work, we've got to arrange these in sets of four fabrics that work together. Otherwise your color change is going to look like a straight line if you just do two together that look good together instead of four, instead of those fun peaks. So the first thing you wanna do when you open this up, a lot of times that we arranged in color order, sometimes you may or may not agree with the placement of it. And so that is all your own personal taste. Like for example, I would not put this light one next to this dark piece here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go through and get them into sets of four that I like um, personally. And so I'm gonna start with my dark blues and a lot of jelly rolls or strip rolls in this case will have prints that are identical, like two of the same. So I'm going to go ahead and put those together and then I'm going to find two other dark ones that would work with that which these work quite well. But basically right now, the first thing I'm gonna do is just arrange this all in color order, going from lightest to darkest. So we're starting over here, I've got my darkest, and then we're gonna get a little bit lighter from there and kind of see how this all shakes out as I'm going through this. And sometimes even if everything is in like perfect color order when you receive it, you might not have it in perfect sets of four. And so you are gonna have some extra pieces in this, which is nice because then you can just leave some out if some are not working where you want them to be. Okay, so we're getting a little lighter here. Actually, that's going into green. So I'm gonna try, let's see, that's more tealy. So I'm gonna set up a separate one that has the teals. I'm just gonna get all my blues together for now and go from there. Let's see, I consider, I guess that's more teal. Consider this a very light teal. So my first step here, I'm really just putting everything together in what I consider to be color order. So I, I'm not really, I love the fabrics, but I'm not really loving the decision of where they're placed because I need to create that color change in this pattern where it's going from seamlessly from color to color. So I'm going through now and I'm kind of creating that on my own just by going through and evaluating what looks good with what. So I've got all my blues and uh, greens in there and I'm just kind of figuring out what I think goes where best. And this is gonna be partially your own preference, but if you just start by separating everything into colors and going from light to dark, that's a really good place to start because you're gonna have a really good idea of what you think looks best together. And then you can go from there in terms of color after that. All right, so now I've got everything laid out. I've got my dark blues, light blues, my greens, yellows, pinks and oranges. So now I wanna kind of get these going in color order because the pinks kind of feed into the oranges, which then feed into the yellows, 
which then move very nicely into the greens. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna separate these into sets of four that work nice together. And if I have duplicates, like here, there's two of a lot of these fabrics, I'm just gonna put two together that work well from each one, and that's gonna be my kind of set of four. So I'm gonna start, let's see, we'll start with the pink at the top and work our way down from there. So I've got everything the way I want it. I pulled four strips to the side that didn't really work with going in the color order. Again, you can choose these however you want. I left the two darker strips out and two of the oranges. But we're gonna go from pink to the pink orange to the green yellow to the really light. And then we start getting into like the limey turquoise, turquoise, light blue, medium blue, and dark blue. So this is gonna be a really nice color progression. We've already got it arranged in sets of four, so it's gonna look good. I'm gonna do the same thing with my um, tenon squares now that I've got this order figured out, so that way I've got the same four fabrics that I'll be using in each row. But again, this is totally up to you, whatever looks best in your mind. Um, I just know that the first thing I normally do when I open up a strip roll for a quilt like this is I look at the pattern and I see that I need sets of four and so I'm gonna arrange them in sets of four that I like and that I think is gonna make that rainbow layer cake look really awesome when it's all together. So once you've decided on your color placement, we're gonna sew these together into sets of two and I do that in my groups of four. So I kind of do it all at once so that way I know which ones I meant to keep together because we spend so much time figuring out the order. I wanna make sure I maintain that throughout the construction of the quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these first two here. And I know there's always like, where do you sew on a, when you're doing one of these? What I like to do is arrange it so that the edge of my presser foot is even with the outside of the pinked edge. And that's because not all strip rolls are created equal. Some of them are exactly two and a half inches wide. Some of them are a little bit skinnier. Some of them are a lot wider. But if I always sew, where I'm lining up the edge of that presser foot with the outside of it, and sometimes I'll even sew a scant quarter inch seam as well, then I know I'm at least gonna be able to trim down in order to get it to the right size. When I'm done with one strip, I'm just gonna grab the next two and I'm gonna chain piece those in. That'll save a lot of time and thread. All right, so I'm gonna press this open. And to do that, what I like to do is open that seam up with my fingertips and then holding at least three fingers down on that seam to kind of finger press it open. I line it up with that tip of the iron right on that seam to get it Nice and flat. And I do reduce my stitch length to 2.0 when I'm pressing the seams open. You're gonna go all the way down and you want it to be a nice straight seam. If you see any wiggles in here, that means that you have pressed a pleat into it and so you need to fix that or it's not gonna turn out the right size. It should look perfectly straight from the front as well. You'll see a wiggle in there too if you mess it up. So we're going to go ahead and press it again from this side as well then it's ready for the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pressing these open and then we're going to cut these into equilateral triangles so we can make our diamonds. So I'm gonna give you a measurement here that I normally don't give in the videos because we want you to get the pattern and support us with that. But I'm gonna give it to you here because it's very critical that this strip be exactly four and a half inches wide. Otherwise, it is not gonna fit together with the parts from the layer cake, the 10 and square pack that we're gonna cut to size. So 
I know there are those of you out there who are gonna be like, I can figure out the whole pattern from now, I don't need to buy it. And to those of you, I would say, please, if you wanna do this, spend the $12 and get the pattern. Um, this may be a hobby for you, but it is definitely a business for me. Both my husband and I work in the business full time. We don't have extra income from anywhere else. And then we of course have staff who also depend on this revenue in order to feed their families and pay their bills. So. I'm off my soapbox now. Thank you very much. If you want to make this pattern, if you buy it from us, we appreciate it. It's called Rainbow Layer Cake. Now, here's something that you need to know. I said a little bit earlier, not all layer cakes are created equal. And we need this to be exactly four and a half inches wide. And in this case, it is measuring at about four and six eighths. No, six, that would be three quarters five eighths. So if I were to just put this in now, it's not gonna fit right. And you're gonna be easing stuff in, you're not gonna have points show up the way they're supposed to, and it's gonna be a problem. And it's just very rare, uh, in my opinion, that you end up with a uh, two and a half inch strip roll that is actually two and a half inches. So no matter what you get, you wanna measure it at this point, and if it is less, or if it is more than four and a half inches, then you're gonna need to do this step here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. So half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So what I did is I'm lining up the two and a quarter inch mark all along that center seam. Then I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna trim off those extra bits right there. So now we got that, we got that trimmed up. I'm gonna go ahead and continue cutting the rest of it so we can get that evened up. And then we're gonna do the other side and get it to actually be four and a half inches. I know this is an extra step, but it is so worth it at this point to do it. And we don't mention this in the pattern because the one that I used was like cut perfectly to two and a half inches and this just wasn't a problem. Um, but since then I've worked with a lot of different brands and it really just, it's really hit or miss on whether or not your roll is gonna be exactly the two and a half inches as advertised. So definitely take this step. You won't regret it. All right, so now we've got the edge that I trimmed up and you can see that and then we sold the pink edge over here. So now to get it to be exactly four and a half inches, it should be where you can still line up that two and a quarter down the center, but you know, things happen, fabric shifts. So what you wanna do is make sure you're lining up four and a half inches with the edge that you just trimmed and then just square it up to that. I know we're not trimming off a whole lot here, but trust me, it, it can make a really big difference if you have one that's pretty oversized. Next, we're gonna use a equilateral triangle ruler. And again, not all equilateral triangle rulers are made the same. This is the Clearview Triangle Ruler, the 60 degree, and I prefer the eight inch. I find it's really versatile. And here's the important part. This one has a point on the tip. Some of them are flat on the top and the math is very different for those versus the ones that have the point. And I prefer this for a couple of other reasons too. One being is it's really nice to line up those points when you have points intact on the sides, but you have to have any equilateral triangle ruler that has points on all three sides as opposed to one blunt tip at the top because otherwise your quilt is not gonna turn out the right size. You're not gonna get enough um, strips or triangles cut out of this strip because the math is just totally different. So if you like our patterns, we use this for every single 60 degree triangle or diamond pattern that we have. So you will be able to use this again. I use this one all the time. It is like one of my top three rulers. So what we're gonna do to get this going is first I'm gonna go ahead and square up this edge. And to do that, I'm going to line up the marking with the middle of my ruler with the edge here. And then I'm just gonna trim off that selvage. Now that I have a nice straight edge to work with, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a half equilateral triangle that has an extra quarter inch past the center for a seam allowance. Here's what that means. So what you're gonna do is you're going to line up your fabric or your ruler on your fabric 
so that the line to the left of that center line is even with the edge of your fabric. And then that four and a half inch mark is gonna be even with your bottom. We're gonna go ahead and give that a slice. So now you can see we have the half equilateral triangle ruler, plus we've got a quarter inch over here for our seam allowance. We're gonna set that to the side. We're gonna use that for our side pieces to make our quilt nice and square when we're done without having to mess up and cut any fabric off. So that'll be great. So from here on out, you're just gonna be flipping your ruler up and down as you cut. So what I'm doing is I am lining up the four and a half inch mark with the top of the ruler and the tip with the bottom and then my edge is even with the edge that I just cut. So I'm happy with that. Go ahead and give it a cut. And then again, we're gonna flip it around one more time and we're gonna line everything up the same way again. Just now the four and a half is at the bottom. We're still working with that cut edge over there and we're making sure that our tip is nice and in line with the top over there. The one thing you wanna make sure that you're doing is that you have a nice sharp tip here. Otherwise your triangle is gonna be a little bit wider than it's supposed to be because you're adding in extra length. And again, you might not get the right amount of triangles when you're cutting and they're definitely not gonna to fit together correctly. So do make sure you take your time at this stage to cut everything correctly. Now, when you get to the end, you're gonna have one of these going in the opposite direction. That's good, you will be able to use that later. All right, so I'm gonna cut a couple from the other strip for now so we can show you how to put your diamonds together. All right, so I've got everything cut and I put the lighter pinks on one side and the darker pinks on the other. And I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together and sew them together. All I do is I align my tips of my triangles and once I'm satisfied with that, this should be the same size. Everything should line up real nice like that. You can just sew your quarter inch seam down. If you feel like you can always pin this, I tend to skip it um, and just sew instead. But if you feel like you need to, please go ahead and pin. And again, you can and should chain piece these. When I was doing the quilt, what I did was I did one color way at a time. So I had my set of four, and so I sewed all of those together with the strip piece units to get my diamonds together. And then I would press them and lay them out. And then that way I was really easy to tell like what was what and have everything nice and organized. Plus it helped me feel like I was making more little accomplishments throughout instead of you know having to wait till the very end. All right, so I've got my two pieces here that were cut from the ends. I'm gonna go ahead and flip those right sides together as well. In this case, you wanna make sure you are lining up your right angles and your points on the edge. And again, I normally don't pin this, but feel free if you like to pin. Just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and press these open. It's a little bit different though, because we wanna make sure that we're not pressing those other seams in the other direction. So rather than just slide the iron all the way down, I still open that with my fingertips, but I'm gonna lift and press a lot more with this, so that way I don't accidentally push something as I'm dragging that iron along. Once I get to the other side, I will just go right over top. And you can see here, we've got some little dog ears hanging out. I don't trim those because that's gonna be really helpful when we start putting our rows together because it gives us another point to line up to. So that's really helpful. So just leave those intact for now. I probably should note here that while when you look at the quilt, it's a little chaotic because there's no neutral at all in the quilt. There is a lot of planning that I put into this in my brain when I'm getting ready to do it. So for example, when I'm laying these out, I've got my darker pinks here on the bottom. So I'm gonna stack the next one so that the darker pinks are on the top. That way when I go to lay it out, there's gonna be a lot of color variation. It won't look like it's the same one right next to each other and it will really just look really fun and really scrappy, but you've put some planning into it. So it's gonna look great in the end. All right, so I have the four and a half inch strips that were cut out of the 10 inch square pack. And I just still have them lined up to where I have all four from this particular colorway all together. And I need to cut some equilateral triangles out of these as well. Just like before, I like to start by lining it up, except for this time, I'm gonna go ahead and line up any of those center lines with the top. And then I'm just going to trim off the side here so I can give myself a nice square edge to work with. 
Now I'm actually gonna flip these all around, making sure to keep those edges nice and crisp so that way you're ending up with the same size uh, cutting all the way through. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I'm lining up that four and a half inch with the bottom and then the quarter inch marking to the left of the center even with the edge. And that is going to give me that nice triangle where I've got that quarter inch seam down the center. Now you're not gonna need this in the construction of the quilt top, but you are gonna have quite a few of these left over. So you have a couple of options. You can make a coordinating throw pillow out of that to match the quilt, or you could piece it into the backing of the quilt. Either way, it's a lot of fun fabric, so don't let it go to waste, do something fun with it. All right, so now I'm just gonna keep flipping that around just like I did before, where I've got the edge lined up where I just cut four and a half at the top and the point even with the very bottom there. Flip again. Give it a little space. And now here is where it gets really kind of fun. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this, but you don't need to keep switching back between rulers. You can use this ruler to cut everything. So what you can do is you can line up any of these center lines with the top and then scooch it over so that the quarter inch is coming out right at the tip of where this has been cut. And then you're gonna be able to give this a little trim. Take off your extra. And then we've got another half equilateral triangle that you can use as a bonus project. One note on the bonus project, since we're only cutting two from this, these are basically the same unit. So you're not gonna be able to sew those together. So what you're gonna wanna do is there's two of these that are gonna get cut from each of your 10 inch squares. So for one of them, start it with the angle coming from the top corner to the bottom of your strip. And for the next one, start it in the bottom left corner going up to the top. And then you'll have pieces that look more like this when they go together. Or you could use a batik as well. We don't have any batiks at our shop, but that's just the way to do it, is make sure that they're going in opposite directions. You could also have it so that half of the fabrics are print side up and half of them are print side down. And then you can cut them all the same way and it will work perfectly for you. One note about sewing your large triangles into diamonds is you're not gonna do it for the ones that are going to be at the top and the bottom of the row. So whatever your lightest and your darkest color is at the edges of the rainbow, just leave those apart. It says it in the pattern, but I wanted to make sure to call out to that so you don't have to do any unpicking later. You're gonna to wanna to take a little bit of time at this step to make sure that you are not gonna be sewing the same fabrics together. Otherwise, there really is no point in doing a half square triangle. You might as well have just let it go. But in this one, there's different fabrics in each one. So I can just flip the top one to the bottom and it's gonna be fine. Each one will be different. But you may, if you have two of the same, then you might need to uh, do a little bit more fussing to make that work. So just like before, I'm just gonna flip these guys right sides together. I'm gonna line up those points and sew my quarter inch seam. I'm gonna go ahead and chain piece all of these to make it go really fast. before I'm gonna press these open, but I wanna point out these points didn't match up perfectly here, but I'm not too worried about it because we are gonna be assembling this on the bias, which means there's wiggle room. So as long as they're pretty close, don't fuss too much about that. You're gonna be able to still have a nice and flat quilt. All right, so just like before, I just kinda of open that up with my fingertips and then press the iron straight across. And then once I've done the front or the back, go from the front as well. So this quilt is assembled on diagonal rows. That's so that way we can keep all these diamonds going in the right direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to assemble this first row and add your corner. And then I'm gonna show you how to join your rows to when you get them larger and larger. I use a two penny method for that part and it results in perfect points every time. All right, so I'm just gonna move this off to the side for now because we don't need it just yet. 
But for right now, what I'm gonna show you how to do is how I first get these guys ready to go. So here's where these little points really come in handy. We're gonna use those as our guides when it comes to laying everything right sides together. So I'm gonna start by flipping these so that way the sides that I need to sew together are together. And this takes some getting used to because instead of having a piece that's right on top of each other, you're gonna have them going in opposite directions. So you kind of have to get used to that. Now, what I wanna have happen is for this point to be right on top of the point below and for the tip of this triangle to be nice and even with this point here. Again, I normally don't pin at this step, but if you want to, I would pin here and here once you get those two areas lined up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew straight down this and I should be coming in right at the point of where that triangle is and coming out right where this little valley is created down here where those points are coming together. All right, so once I get that started, what I do is I just kind of reline up those points and I just put my fingertip on top of them. And then I'll usually put a second finger about halfway through just to kind of keep it nice and straight and even because again, this is on the bias so it can stretch on you. But as long as your sewing machine is in good order and your feed dogs are working right, you should be fine. All right, so I was able to sew and come right out. You can kind of see where that thread is. It came right out through here, so that's great. So those should be exactly where we need them to be. Now when we lay this back out, we can see that this is looking pretty good. And yeah, we've got the same fabric coming here and here, but that's okay, not a big deal. Another thing to note is that these are offset. These are not meant to meet at the same point. And if you did want them to meet at the same point, you'll be paper piecing, that would be a whole different project. So just embrace it, be good with it not being perfect. It's part of the fun and the chaos of this quilt design. All right, so now I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together again. And this time, because we have two triangles, that's gonna meet up just perfectly. So we've got the edges of the triangle meeting the dog ear, and then we have the tips meeting in the same spot on this side. So again, I'm gonna sew my quarter inch seam and I should be coming out right at the point in between those two pieces. I like to wait to press until my entire row is together. And then it's the same as always, where I'm just going to open up those edges and run my iron down through it. Again, being careful to make sure that I don't get any of those guys flipped in the wrong direction. And by the way, the layout diagram that's in the pattern for Rainbow Layer Cake has it really clear of what's supposed to be where in terms of whether it's a strip piece diamond or one of those equilateral triangle diamonds that's straight from triangles from your 10 inch square piece. And so definitely refer to that when you are laying everything out. I laid mine out on the floor, a spare bed would work or also a design wall would obviously be the best case scenario. All right, so we've got row number one done. So now we're gonna add our corner to that. And in this case, you're just gonna flip it right sides together. You're gonna line up the tip of that with the dog ear that's beneath, get that together. And then this should be going a little bit past where you were at before and the tip, of the triangle should be hitting right even with the edge of this piece here. And that'll give you your nice quarter inch seam past your join so that way you can get your binding on and not lose any points. Again, if you wanna pin this, please do, but I usually skip it. But I've done a few more of these probably than someone who's trying it for the first time. Press that open again. This is another reason why I really like to press open because you really get really beautiful points when you do this and there's not a lot of bulk so you really are not limited at all when it comes to your quilting. All right, so this is looking really great. We've got our point exactly a quarter inch away from the edges, both at this side of the diamond and over here. So that is looking really good. Everything's fitting together really well. So now I'm gonna show you how I would arrange the next row to get ready to sew, but it's the same process. So you've got that down um, and then we're going to sew these guys together. 
to the next row. It was a little bit too long to make it on camera. So I'm just gonna show you how I would arrange this to get it ready to bring over to the sewing machine for, for me to sew. And it's basically the exact same process as before, just there's more pieces. So what I like to do is start at the bottom and flip those guys right sides together and line them up. I'm not making sure it's perfect at this point. I'm just making sure the edges that I need to sew together are in alignment. Now we're gonna do that again over here. Line that guy up. And in this case, I've got one extra piece that's at the top over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stack these with the bottom one on top. And I would do this no matter how many of these I had to go together. And then I would line this up so that the edge that needs to ultimately be sewn is even with the edges I will be sewing. And then I'll line it up so that the edge I need to sew is facing like so the sewing machine is on the right. That way I can just pick this up bring it over to my sewing machine and sew, and I won't screw anything up. At least I haven't so far, and I've gotten the majority of the quilt together uh, besides what we need to show on camera here, and it's worked out pretty well. So that worked for me. I did one row at a time. That way I didn't get too screwed up. And once I got one entire row together, I would press it, and then I would lay it back out, and I would get the next one ready to sew. Now it's time to join our rows. Each row is gonna go together the same way, just some of them are gonna be a lot bigger than these two here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn them sideways so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see and zoom in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together. And the lovely part of pressing these open is that we can see exactly where all three seams join together. So I'm gonna take one pin and I'm gonna put them right in where all of these seams are coming together. And then I'm gonna find the point where all the seams are coming together on the other side and put my pin in right there. Then, pinching that between my thumb and forefinger so that the pin is going straight up and down through the fabric, I'm gonna take a second pin and pin in from the side going straight across that. What that does is it keeps these points right on top of each other and will ensure that the points are as close as close can be when it comes time to sew them together. Now, the one thing I don't do, the reason why I don't pick this over, is if I were to rotate that, then I would push the top fabric forward and the bottom fabric back and my points would no longer be in alignment. All right, so remember, these guys are gonna be offset and they're supposed to be, so don't worry about doing any pinning here. You can just repeat the process at your next section, finding where all those points are coming together. Pinch that between your thumb and forefinger, and then go ahead and pin across. Now when it comes to this point, I am gonna pin here, and just like before, it should be to the point where the tip of this triangle should be in line with this straight edge here. So once I've got that in line, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in. And over here on the left side, the point of my triangle should be even with the point of that dog ear. So I can go ahead and pin there as well. Probably one thing I should note is that you're gonna have dog ears lining up here as well, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna be perfectly on top of each other. So if they're not, if they're offset a little bit, go with where those points are coming together, not with where the dog ears are. They're really nice for when you're lining up your edges, but they may not be perfectly straight when you're lining these up. So just make sure to pin where all those seams are coming together. Now when I sew this, I'm gonna go ahead and sew so that my needle is one needle width to the right of where all those pieces come together and that will make sure I never miss a point ever. I kinda go a little fast when I'm in between and then I slow down when I'm coming to those points so I can make sure that I'm always sewing one needle width to the right of where those all come together. And remember, we are sewing on the bias here, so you wanna let the feed dogs do the work of pulling everything through. You don't wanna tug or pull because that can stretch things out of place. Gonna go ahead and press the seam open as well and this one you really want to make sure that you are lifting that iron up because there are a lot of seams going in a lot of directions and you don't want to accidentally flip one the wrong way 
Now these are some great joins. We've got a lot of points coming together. They're looking great. Everything is the way it should be. I've got nice quarter inch seams going across here so I can make sure to apply that binding and not lose any points then. Everything is laying super flat because we pressed the seams open and it's looking fabulous. I can't wait to finish getting the rest of this quilt together. Thank you so much for following along with this video tutorial. Again, it is for rainbow layer cake. You need one two and a half inch strip roll and one 10 inch square pack from the same fabric line. And it looks great if you were able to find one that has a lot of color in it. We will have kits for this quilt while supplies last over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. But you can always check our available selection of rolls and 10 inch square packs over at that website as well. You can also get the pattern. You can download it with a PDF version or you can get a printed copy that we can mail to you. And that is over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com as well. Thanks so much for following along. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you wanna say thanks, if you find a project you wanna give it a go, we appreciate it. When you get all the supplies from us, it helps us be able to bring you new video tutorials every week. Thanks so much and happy quilting.